Okay. Are going to have to be imminent and about to happen. Okay. And so any reasonable belief that the crime would happen. And the necessity, so he had no other options. Now, can any of you think of a case in the book that's similar to this one? So in this case, you can kind of see the reasoning. What was the name of that case? It is State v. Norman. What page is that? 229. The regret to her self-defense, right? yeah. Now, you have to help the prosecutor in arguing that the killing was not self-defense. What should the prosecutor argue? And here you need to disregard any possible defense that X potentially may have based on his age. Mm -hmm. He was sleeping, so there was no immediate threat. The aggressor was a little quicker this time, and the use of force was more. It was it was not balanced out because he was sleeping. Yeah. So you need to consider the proportionality. Are his actions proportional to the beatings? You need to consider the fact that he collapsed on the couch, so that would mean that he temporarily retreated. <coughs> and you need to consider whether or not the harm was imminent and immediate, which is also the case that was argued add on to saving Norman. <laughs> okay, so question number three. X is approached by a gang leader and told that the gang wants X to fly to New York City and to deliver narcotics to an affiliated gang. X is told by the gang leader that if X does not cooperate, that X's spouse and child will be hardened. X is warned not to talk to anyone about their conversation. The gang leader tells X that the gang will be following X, and that if, approaches, if X approaches law enforcement, that X will place X's family at risk. The gang leader immediately drives X to the airport and puts X on a plane. X arrives at the airport in New York City and is approached by two drug enforcement agency agents who have been tipped off that X will be arriving with narcotics. As the agents approach and flash their badges, X flees from the agents and eventually sees an arrest. The agents search X and X's luggage and discover narcotics. X plans to rely on the defense of duress. Will he be successful? In answering this question, consult the Contento Pachon case in the textbook. So, can somebody tell me what the case United States v. Contento Pachon is about? What are the issues at that case? Um, it's the same thing for the first one. Um, what, what, what's the thing that is the same? Uh, he was threatened. In, in the case, they were trying to explain that he was not immediate, but the fact that he was being followed around, it was a threat. So one of the elements of duress is immediate threat, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what else? He, they say that in the case, it would be unreasonable for him to escape, like, Leave his job. He just like goes up, run out like from the game banger. So it was kind of reasonable for him to escape. And the last one. So there's no reasonable opportunity to escape. Yeah. Okay. And the last one I forgot. I think it was the fact that he contacted the 
that he collaborated with the um, with the police or something like that once he was in a safe place. Mm -hmm. Did X do that? No, no, he didn't in this case. Alright, so in this case, you need to list the elements of duress and compare and contrast this case with the one in the textbook, which is basically what she said. Those three elements. So you do need a oh, mental Yeah, content to put on. It's on uh, page 305. the immediate threat of death or serious bodily injury, no reasonable opportunity to escape the threatened harm, well-grounded fear that the threat will be carried out. And then the last thing she mentioned is the defendant must submit to proper authorities, which happened in the textbook but did not in, in the case in question number three. What was the first one? Immediate threat of death and serious bodily injury. manufactures illegal chemical narcotics that X sells to street gangs. G, an undercover government agent, approaches X and offers X a difficult to obtain ingredient that X relies on to manufacture unlawful chemical narcotics. In return, G wants one half of the manufactured chemical narcotics. G also tells X that G will put X in touch with individuals who will purchase the narcotics. G gives X the crucial ingredient and when the narcotics have been manufactured, puts X in touch with another government agent. B, who poses as a leader of a street gang. As X sells the narcotics to undercover Agent B, X is arrested. Will X be successful in relying on the predisposition test for entrapment? Let's start with defining the predisposition test. What does it mean? Um, to determine if the government engages the crime. Well, that's basically entrapment. Yeah. So, yeah. So, there are two elements that you need to fulfill in the subjective test to see whether or not it is entrapment. So, one of them would be the predisposition, and the other would be inducement. So whether or not the government induced. So with the predisposition, that basically means that the individual has to already have, if an individual already has a predisposition to commit the crime at hand, then it can't be entrapment. Does X have this predisposition or not? Yeah. Why? Because he already does manufacturing drugs for street games. Okay, for this question to have a complete answer, you need to define what the predisposition test is, and then make your argument yes or no. Same thing with the inducement? Why? Um, 
because he, the government, though, in this case, he offers him a, a drug that he relies on, and then the government, the guy tells him that, he doesn't tell him directly that he's going to have um, an economic gain, but it is kind of reasonable sense that he's going to have because he tells him that he's going to contact him with other people and that he's going to get money, so there is an inducement, but the fact that he was predisposed, he cannot rely on entrapment. Okay, so the question for the extra credit is, I'm not going to read this whole scenario, but can an eight-year-old be held liable for residential burglary? Would you hold KRL criminal liable for residential burglary? And in answering this question, list the four most important factors that the judge should use in determining whether KRL knows right from wrong. <coughs> He said that he knew it was wrong to steal candy. Okay. He knew it was wrong to ride bicycles from the neighbors. Um, he also said that it was wrong or something like that, that he knew it was wrong to enter the house. He admitted to the mother that he did what he did was wrong after she beat him up. That's what the last one said. Because I don't know if him being a very normal intelligence will go in here as well. So, so that's going to help you decide whether or not mm -hmm. he's. But I was reading in the case in the book, it said that if you've done similar crimes, like the one that you did, you are. Basically, convicted to whichever crime they made because you've done it before. You can argue both ways, but you just need to list the four most crucial factors in determining whether he knows right from wrong. So you should consider that he's an eight year old and how that factors in. Does anybody have any idea what the four factors would be? Efforts to conceal the crime. Okay. Uh, efforts to influence the witnesses. Okay. Seriousness of the crime. Mm -hmm. And age of the child. Okay. You say that one more time. Um, efforts to conceal the crime. Efforts to influence the witnesses. Seriousness of the crime and age of the child. Huh? Efforts to um, conceal the crime, efforts to persuade witness, I think, or something like that. 